So one of the things we really want to talk about is neuroinflammation, which is sort of taken a back seat to all of the other uh, processes or theories such as amyloid or alpha-synuclein protein hypotheses in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Um, uh, but, but really, the neuroinflammatory angle is something that we think is very, very important and uh, is sort of underappreciated up to now. And if you see, neuroinflammation plays both a positive role in our body in terms of uh, the ability to remove pathogens and things, uh, but also there's very um, negative aspects of neuroinflammation, particularly when it's chronic, uh, that can lead to neurodegenerative disease, it can lead to anxiety and depression, uh, it could also can uh, lead to cognitive uh, impairment. Uh, so we think that uh, we can uh, really help through the role of natural killer cells, reduce the negative aspects of neuroinflammation. Now, I really first wanted to talk about uh, the research that's been done in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and specifically how we feel our natural killer cells play a much more complete comprehensive role in tackling both of these diseases and how the diseases in terms of mechanism of action are very, very similar. So as we go back to the idea of neuroinflammation, uh, there's been data to show that whether it's the uh, amyloid tau proteins in Alzheimer's disease or the alpha-synuclein proteins in Parkinson's disease, that as these proteins accumulate in the brain, they elicit a, um, a whole full slew of neuroinflammation and specifically how that neuroinflammation really starts to cause a lot of alterations uh, in the crosstalks between uh, glial cells and neurons. Of note is that two separate institutions have found that uh, whether they be the alpha-synuclein proteins or the amyloid proteins, that when you take mouse models and you knock out the natural killer cells, either you deplete them or you work with a mouse that has had the natural killer cells knocked out, that that causes an overwhelming um, uh, acceleration of protein deposition. And both of these uh, independent papers have concluded that natural killer cells can not only help to slow the deposition, but in some respects can also help to eliminate uh, uh, protein deposition in both of these conditions. Uh, the challenge is obviously immunosenescence. As people get older, the natural killer cells, and in general, the whole immune system tends to get weaker. And this uh, also allows for uh, acceleration of protein deposition. Um, and uh, what we also know about uh, how these proteins then elicit a robust cascade is you can see several papers have now found uh, in Parkinson's as well as Alzheimer's disease that they specifically elicit an autoreactive T cell autoimmune phenomena. So as these T cells are honing in towards these proteins, in fact, what they're doing is causing a lot of collateral damage to the surrounding neurons and uh, glial uh, pathways. And this is as much causing uh, a lot of the changes and uh, impairment uh, in individuals as the protein is uh, in and of itself. We would also argue that if you're just removing the proteins, as a lot of the current clinical trials have done, um, and still leaving the inflammation behind, that you may not see real robust improvement in the underlying cognitive uh, impairment. And so we think in addition to removing the proteins, you also need to address this underlying inflammation. Uh, the other thing that's really interesting is to uh, see the amount of autoimmune disease um, associated with dementia and Alzheimer's. Specifically, they found that if you had an underlying autoimmune disorder, which is again where your T cells are uh, overreactive and causing uh, damage to, let's say, the white matter and multiple sclerosis or the joints and rheumatoid arthritis or the skin and psoriasis or the bowel inflammatory bowel disease, that uh, they found you had a 33% uh, increased risk of developing Parkinson's disease and then also when they looked at uh, patients with um, uh, autoimmune disease, they found a large uh, population were more likely to develop uh, Alzheimer's disease. So again, this underlying um, um, imbalance in autoregulation of your existing uh, T cells seems to predispose that inflammation and could also be uh, one of the 
variables that lead to a greater incidence of uh, neurodegenerative diseases. Uh, this is work from Eric Vivier, uh, where he looked at patients with active autoimmune diseases. And when they drew blood and looked specifically at natural killer cells, uh, a lot, what was really interesting was that um, uh, almost all of these autoimmune diseases were associated with either reduced numbers of natural killer cells or natural killer cells that had impaired activity, meaning they had uh, weakened cytotoxicity uh, or activating receptor expression. The final thing I just want to uh, give background on is that natural killer cells have also been shown to have the ability to identify and eliminate damaged neurons. So um, when you look at whether it be due to inflammation, whether it be due to protein deposition uh, or infection, as you have damaged neurons there, they can greatly interfere with the ability for normal brain function by uh, reducing the connectivity, the electrical impulses and such. And while we're not saying that the brain can necessarily regenerate new cells, we do think that as NK cells eliminate some of these damaged neurons, that it allows alternative uh, signaling pathways to form. And so uh, to just summarize um, uh, so far that we think our natural killer cells uh, can not only um, help uh, remove proteins, they can help to cool off the brain by removing these autoreactive T cells. And the final part is they can start to uh, really uh, eliminate these damaged neurons.